What is up everyone? It's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Scott Report and today I bring you an anime review of Durara Raketsu episode 36. The finale. Huh. <sighs> Erased gave me the feels. This episode gave me the feels as well because I truly am going to miss Durarara. I mean, I really am. I came in on it kind of late. I mean, I just started watching it as a series maybe two years ago. So I missed the first initial run. I used to watch it when it came on Toonami. Um, and, you know, I wasn't kind of with it then. At first, I was like, what the hell is going on here? What's up with this chick with no head? That name is stupid. So I kind of passed over it, but it was suggested that I watch it. And boy, am I glad I did. And this episode alone is like one of the reasons why I'm so glad I stuck with this series as even though I'm still going to crown last week's episode as the best episode in the entire series, maybe this ending, you can't be mad at it. And I'm, I got to clap for it. I just got to clap it up for Durara. Again, I just can't express enough how glad I am. I picked up this series and stuck with it and I finally got to see it end. So I can't imagine the wait that people had since this first came out had to go through because I probably only had to miss maybe a year or two of it. And I haven't been this happy but sad at the same time since um, the ending of Kuroko no Basketball, which is my number three anime of all time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on to the episode. Um, we start off right in the middle of the street with Azaya and Shizuo in their fight. Um, and as this is going on, we see um, Rochi. He's pretty much looking on. Everybody's looking on at this point. And we see Oba, who basically wants to be Azaya 2.0, as he says... He and Isaiah are two of the same. They both, you know, look down on monsters and they want to eradicate monsters as the battle goes on. And we get a little bit of a longer battle with Shizuo and Isaiah. It was a little quicker than I thought it would be, but um, the battle finally does at least almost come to a conclusion. The people that are controlled by Saika are still pushing forward and trying to get into the restaurant to get Tom and pretty much harm Tom and make him one of the followers. But Russian Sushi runs in, they're out with their little weapons, guns are blazing, they're fighting back to get everybody um, safe and pretty much get everybody back, fight back and not to be controlled. In the midst of the battle between Isaiah and Shizuo, Isaiah is actually stabbed by Verona. Verona interrupts the battle between the two and she pulls a gun out on Isaiah, um, basically saying, you know, stay away from him. And she says to Shizuo that you're not a monster. I'm pretty sure he didn't need that clarification, but that was a nice point, you know, for her to say, you know, forget what this guy is saying, you're not weird. And in her own way, you know, she's saying, you're probably one of the best people I ever came across. So she has Isaiah at gunpoint. Um, of course, that's broken up by Simon, because you know he has a new violence policy. He throws in a flashbang that, pre that breaks them up. And from there, we go on to our next scene where we get to, to Selty, who's on the rooftop. Um, Selty pretty much wants to atone for everything that she's done. She recognizes that everything that's going on in the city, or at least alive, it has to do with her existence. As far as Isaiah wanting to find her head and make the war happen, Mikado's actions, a lot of things she feels in some places is because of her. So what she does at this point is she spreads her web across the city and stops everything that's going on. She stops all the violence that's going on at the bottom with the people that are controlled by Saika and the gangs. They're all wrapped up. She stops Mikado from killing himself. He really did go through with it and shoot himself in the head with the gun that he had, but her web stopped that bullet from, from going through. She also uses her web to take the bullet out of Mikado's leg, I'm sorry, Mizomi's leg. So she stops all that. In the midst of all this happening, she kind of monologues a bit to Mikado by saying that you dying isn't going to make you like me in a roundabout way. That's what she said. You're not going to find any satisfaction in death. And that's when she goes on to explain that pretty much everything going on in the city is because of her. And she wants to go ahead and atone for that. And she says that now, once everything is cleared up, she'll go back to being a reaper. She's going to go away. She's trying to leave the scene. Everybody's saying, no, don't go away, Selty. They're trying to convince her to come back. Her horse shooter is refusing to go, and she's telling it to leave frantically. As she's making her way to leave, 
Shinra pops up uh, and, Shin and convinces her, you know, Shinra, his mission ever since the last few episodes is basically to get to Celtie, confess his love to her and hope that that will bring his me her memories back. She still goes on her way and leaves. So while everybody's begging for her to stay, Shinra pretty much says, I'm going to be the villain right now. So he asks Shizuo to throw her him into the air and he is launching through the air right now as we see Celtie and Shooter and she's she does have her memories in some sense I mean all along while this was talking she was actually talking from the head and she does have the memories of the people in the city she doesn't want any more suffering as I mentioned many times already everything that was going on kind of directly deals with her she just wants to clean that all that up and go back to her life as it was before you know she became the Celtie that we know and love so as this is going on, we see Shinra just flying through the air, just frantically. Only in Shinra form that he can do it. You hear a little scream, like, ah! He's flying through the air. She has a moment of clarity at that point. She sees Shinra flying and snaps out of it long enough to catch him. While he's doing so, he says to her, I know you remember. And he cuts the head because, you know, the head is was causing a conflict between the memory she has of Celtic we all know and her going back to her true self. So Shinra cuts the head. He had it in his heart because he knows how Celtic feels about her, him that she wouldn't let him die. So she catches him and we get the old Celtic back, people. We get the old Celtic back as she chews him out like you idiot, you could have died. She's talking, she's putting the cell phone up to the screen. And that was just a cute moment because we get the old Celtic back and Shinra knew that his love for her would be all they would need to break through. It was kind of cool to see that Celtic still had her memories. She was trying to fight it. And when the head got cut, you seen all the memories that she had from the beginning of the series that were important to her come back. So we 100% got the old Celtic back. So that was really good. That was probably one of my favorite parts of the episode. Um, we go back down to the city and we see the three friends have reunited, Mikado, Ari, and um, Masomi. And we finally get that promise. They said that when they see each other again, they were gonna tell each other their secrets. And in the midst of that, while they're saying that, here comes Nasujima out of nowhere as he tries to stab Ari as he's still on his, on his path to kill her. And it cliffs hangs from that um it takes us on to our second part of the episode or a second half of the episode should i say and this is where we start to get our sunsets for the series um we see that Isaiah's in a car and he's being drove off by mr keen a along with the chick that took the head um i don't remember her name he's in a car with them as they're actually driving out of ikaburo and it's a fitting end for Isaiah because he says I'm probably going to die anyway. If I'm going to die, I don't want to be in the presence of monsters. So can you please get me out the city? So that's pretty big. I mean, Isaiah leaving the city, I mean, uh, uh, half of what's going on in the city right now is his fault. Most of his selfie, some of his Mikado as of late, but a majority of everything that's going on in the city is his fault. And with Shizuo was probably going to kill him if Verona didn't intervene. Verona was probably going to kill him if Simon didn't stop her. So I think it was best for him to get out the city. Isaiah's getting out of Dodge. We won't have to worry about him. So that's his sunset as he's leaving the city. We find out that the Doolahan head is going to be transported to a headquarters in Chicago that's headed by Shinra's Pops. And he talks to um, Naomi on the roof and asks him to come with her since she has such vast knowledge of it. Who best to have on his team than her at that point? So we don't know if they agree. It's a little bit of banter between them and she chokes him. And we go back to Seiji and Mika as well. Seiji pretty much says, I'm still in love with that head, but I like or I love you as family. So her... So Mika and Seiji, they embrace a little bit. They're going to go with Naomi and Shinra's dad to Chicago to the research center. The next thing we cut to, we see, Ab we see Abashi is still around. This crazy fuck is still around. He tries to run over Hollywood, but Hollywood is swooped up out of the way by, Kura Ki by um, Kijiragi. And she basically says, I saved you, but I want you to atone for all the serial killings that you've done as Hollywood. That's all I ask. So they, she whisked her off. We see the Dollars Gang. When I say the Dollars Gang, I mean Dota, Tagusa, Walker, and 
Walker and uh, Erica, we see them talking about um, Abashi being arrested and he was beat up when he got to the station. Somebody turned him in. So we know that was Kucharaki now. We also cut to Verona as she's in the airport and she's going to go back home and face her father. But she also still wants to keep her rivalry as she says she's going back home to, you know, face her father. Shizuo says, if you ever need help, call me. I'll be there. And in that sense, he's, she says to him that we still have a rivalry. I still want to defeat you. And I want that compassion out of you, that same compassion out of you when I defeat you. So that's their sunset. Um, we cut off to Selty and Sh Selty and um. Sh Selty and Shinra, I'm sorry. We cut off to Selty and Shinra, and they're riding off into the sunset. And we get a cute little scene with them because the cops are still chasing after them. But the scene before it, we have Shinra hugging Selty, you know, as she said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be with you forever. And you know, she doesn't like PDA that much. Whenever Shinra hears that, he gets happy and starts hugging her. And the cop pulls up and says, PDA is an offense. As she starts speeding off on shooter with Shinra on her back into the sunset with the cops chasing her, just like we've always seen, but now it's more of a rivalry thing. The cops just wanted to catch her instead of trying to apprehend her as her being a monster. The, some of the last things that we get, the, we see Dota and the Dollars Gang in the truck, and they see Nasujima on the street, and Dota recognizes that that is the person that ran him over. So you know they're not gonna let that go lightly speeding up and hitting the acceleration Tagusa runs him over um Nasujima is now kidnapped by is now kidnapped by Nikawa and she has him in Isaiah's hideout and she says well you, no one's ever gonna find you here so we can pretty much do everything you want and all you want and all that I want as she brings out a whole bunch of weapons of torture for him that's their sunset and Near the end, we get to the hospital and we find out that Mikado, after taking multiple stabs, is in a, he's unconscious. We have Masomi and Ari there. Oba's trying to make his crusty ass in there to try to start something else. And he's stopped by Akabashi on the way in there. He pretty much threatens him and says, you know, he finally found happiness. He doesn't need you squirming around. Beat it, kid, or you're going to have to deal with me. Finally, we find out that Ari is in love with Mikado. She confesses that to Akabashi in one of the, in the final scene of the series, and she she admits that she truly do love him, and it's not psycho controlling her. So she confesses that to Ak Akabayashi, and at the end we see Mikado pretty much reflecting on everything that he's done. He sees Masomi. Masomi's happy to see him. Ari's there as well as he reaches his hand out and the three of them embrace. And he comes to the realization that in the end, all he ever needed was his friends. And that's where the episode ends. There is one last scene we see with the Dollars chat room, which is now closing. There's no more members left in it. And that is the end of our journey to um, Durarara. A very solid episode once again. I mean, I'm going to give this series as a whole now that it's concluded. I'm going to give this series a 9. It just has so much. And something that I've always said is, Durarara's heroes done right. Durarara took a story about people across the entire city and melded them all together as one. And it did it so well. And it's definitely one of my favorite series of all time. I will put it in, you know... I'm crazy enough to say it's top five. That's how much I enjoy Durara. I mean, I just love this series. I hate to see it go. But all things must come to an end. And it's better when things end on a good note than for it to tell you to go read the manga or to end so bad that you just say what the hell and you felt like you waste your time. So that is my Durara review, people. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, if you liked anything I had to say, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, please do go ahead and subscribe as I will have more for you. Tune in tomorrow as I'll give you my Gundam Iron Bladed Orphans episode 25 review. And as always, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now, but you chose to listen to me, and I really appreciate that. So, this is your boy Infrared. Thank you for watching the Scott Report. See you soon.